Hi, okay, so we're going to be looking at Egypt and the Holy Land, specifically the Holy Land. Now, when we're looking at this, um, the, the land in 1862, it's going to be hard to identify exactly what's going on. But what you need to understand is I've got I've got two guys here. We've got this guy called Wise Up. Now, this guy, he is all about the flood before Noah and all of the the, the, the remnant buildings that, that still exist today, but they've been calcified in many different, in, in very different ways. They've lived, left imprints in rocks and you really just need to look at his site to to understand what I can't actually put into words that he does. So that's really great. And then you've got Martin here. Now, Martin is all post-flood and all of the civilizations that have existed afterwards, which are pretty grand, in fact. You know, some of the architecture and everything... But nevertheless, it's been global, global for want of a better word. There's been flat earth uh, catastrophes that have completely submerged everything. But nevertheless, the ruins have, have remained and they, they're still there and we can still see them. And we can normally see some of these remains in all of the capital cities of the world. Um our state education teaches us that you have the Persian period, you have the Greek period, you've got the Roman period. But what Martin proves is that it's all one period. You know, it's all misinformation. Now, uh, so subscribe to these two sites. But today what I'm going to do is look at Egypt and the Holy Land. Now, there was a, a global catastrophe around 1811, 1812. It's all documented. If you want to research it, you'll find it if, you, if you're really interested. And so I'm going to be looking at Egypt and the Holy Land in, in 1862. So it's about 50 years after everything um, has happened and people are getting back onto their feet. So let's have a look. I'm not quite sure where this is, um, but the time frame is still 1862. We've got photography. I mean, this isn't a drawing. This isn't a painting. This is photography. Okay, so, you know, we've got metal work here. So they're quite advanced to be able to do that. We've got these buildings and we've got these high masts again. This is 1862. I'm quite sure it's somewhere in the Holy Land. Let's go to the next one. Now we've seen these masts before. And Martin has been talking about that in the ancient times they had uh, electricity, but it was atmospheric electricity. They were able to um, transfer it wirelessly. And a lot of Russian sites have also shown this. Just look at this architecture. It's just absolutely amazing. Can't really give you a time frame for this. And don't have a location. There's no location on the photo.
Okay, so this is Cairo, we're in Egypt. We've got these huge towers. We've got all these rods sticking up. Here again. Here again. I mean, do they not resemble like electricity pylons? I mean, what is the purpose of these things? Now, the striking thing about this particular photo is if you look at this huge building here, we know in 1862, they certainly didn't have the technology to build it. Now, if you look around here, this building, the base of this building is like here. It's here. It's so deep. So a significant amount of time has passed, or there's been a catastrophe, and then the ground level has raised up so much. There's been a huge mud flood. It's come up, it's settled, it's solidified, and then you've got another culture coming on and building on top I mean, it's just so it's just so obvious I mean who would dig a hole in the ground huge I mean how big is this building they dig a huge hole and then lay the foundations and then build this huge building up so only one third sticks out of the top of the land doesn't make any sense does it because that isn't what happened. Let's go to the next one. Well, yeah, I've seen it before. Uh, I recently read, I'm going to do a post later about it. I've got the Great Pyramid and uh, Giza. And basically what you have is a huge complex underneath it all. And Egyptology will tell you that, oh yeah, well basically they built a city underneath the Great Pyramid and stuff like that. Okay, But, I mean, that would be some feat of engineering. But obviously what's happened was, was that there was a huge city and then all of the sand and everything else have come on top of it and buried it. Simple as. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Uh, where are we? Um, I don't know where we are. It doesn't make... I don't know. What's it saying? Ports and Etienne of the East. Doesn't make any sense, that's French. Um, not, on, not a lot to say about that. I mean, if you look at the structure and you look at the door here going into the structure, and here's obviously the original door, it's below ground level. So, obviously, something's happened here, and the ground level is up. This has obviously been excavated down here, but here's the ground level at this time. But this building was built previous to this ground level because it's too high, because it actually covered the door. So this door has been dug out. Yeah? It's not rocket science. Uh, Gethsemane. Okay. Uh, a monument to Absalom. 
maybe Absalom, as we know from the Bible. So here we go again. This structure is literally buried within a mountain. So you can see where they've been excavating and it's they're pulling it away from the exterior. So what happened? I mean, you know, is this one millimeter of dust during the day? Oh, sorry, hold on a minute. Hello. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, let's carry on. Yeah, so he's talking about this structure. Unfortunately, um, probably, I don't know where it is, to be honest. But as you can see, it's practically been buried for a very long time in all of this rock. Okay, let's just go to the next one. Now, looking at this, obviously this building here has stood for a very long time and then there's been a landslide and it's completely overrun this whole building. But as time's gone on, it's eroded, falling away because it's a dense material, because gravity doesn't exist. But because it's dense, it's going down, it's, it's coming away. Obviously, you know, this is a, a, a mud flood that's actually sinking. Okay, but obviously, initially when a mud flood came, which is probably early 1800s it would have been straight across like this but it sunk down as, as water sinks down through the mud it brings down also the soil the sediment as well okay so that's what we're looking at here that's what's happened here but the point that's most interesting about this is that initially this this place this town was exceedingly high pretty much like you might think of Tokyo or if you was in uh, uh, or just central London you've got the very high buildings these buildings were very very high and the ground level was way 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 down here okay Um, the door of David is obviously somewhere around Jerusalem. Um, it's not an awful lot I can see there, worth mentioning. Okay, go to the next one. Tomb of the King, French again, Tomb of the King. Um, I mean, this is very f familiar, isn't it? I mean, we've seen this all over the world, really. You know, it's, it's obviously some kind of a, a doorway. Um, you know, we see this in any capital city of the world. Um, so... But what's interesting is that this is now rock. This is um, mud that's petrified to become rock. And it, this this structure, whatever it was made of initially, it, it's all the same. Now, archaeologists today will tell you that, oh, yeah, so this was all rock. And then um, ancient technology, they actually cut this out of the rock and, and basically sculptured all of this. And then it's just been buried over 
thousands and thousands of years. But, but that's not what's going on here. So you have the a mud flood that's come again. And it's completely covered over whatever this building initially was. And so if this was wood, I mean, it's not colour, so I, I can't really tell what it was made of. If, if it was colour and it was some reddish stuff, then perhaps it was made of metal. But it was probably wood, I guess, uh, at this point. So that's all that this is. It's just basically a structure. It's been covered in sediment. There's been a hell of a lot of pressure on top of it, probably because there was water as well involved. And it's solidified and it's calcified. And that's what that's what's left. It's nothing more than that. Okay, let's go, go to the next one. Port door the last so that's the west gate sorry the east gate of jerusalem so this is the east gate of jerusalem now in the bible it says that um jesus will enter jerusalem through the east gate okay and nobody else at least that's what christians say now the thing is is that this east gate is completely blocked yeah i think it actually does say that nobody will enter through the east gate of jerusalem except the lord nobody so if you want to completely destroy christianity all that you need to do is knock this wall down make this again a gate and walk through it and that's the end of Christianity, because the Bible says that nobody will walk through that wall, through that gateway again, ever. It will never happen. Okay. But let's just have a look at this gate. I mean, let's just look at the architecture of it. You know, it's very what some people would term Romanesque or Greek or Persian whatever you know what you know, what was this slot you know, what's this what was that you know did the mud flood come up this high don't know can't tell from this but that's the east gate of jerusalem this is where the lord will walk through <sighs> what do we have here gethsemane know that from the bible uh, it's not much there not much there to look at mount zion not a lot there um again we can look at the the land here it's been raised up Okay, if you look at these buildings here, this is obviously a doorway at some point, but you'd have to be a midget to get through there, wouldn't you? Okay. Again, there's another part of the building. Got a floor here, got a floor here, and look, the land covers half of the window. Yeah. So this place has been mud flooded clear as day easy see easy you've got this little whatever this is here obviously somebody has been picking up bits and bobs and have put it on top interesting that you've got all these rocks here where did all they come from I can't read that.
Not, not much I can say about that. Here we've got the East Gate again here. So basically, back here we've got the Mount of Olives where Jesus is going to return. He'll return here and basically, one way or another, walk through up to the East Gate of Jerusalem and walk through. And today, Although here you've got, these are actually gravestones here. But today, in uh, whatever year you want to call it, this entire place is covered in gravestones. And it's the hope that when Jesus lands on the Mount of Olives and starts to walk towards the East Gate to go through, that everybody that's buried here will be raised from the dead straight away and then follow him through. So they believe. So this is the East Gate. So um, the story is Jesus will land in the Mount of Olives, come through to the East Gate, go into Jerusalem and slaughter everybody that isn't a believer that's in Jerusalem at the time and he'll go through kind of uh, south southwest through Jerusalem to the Valley of Armageddon which will be over here but around there and completely slaughter billions that have come from all over the world to come and destroy Jerusalem and he'll do it with his voice he'll speak a word and Splat, they're all dead. So, this is the East Gate. And so long as this is blocked, Christianity will continue forever. Okay, next picture. Again, this is like that earlier picture we looked at that said uh, the, the, uh, the Tomb of the King. This is called... Uh, Oh, I'm not sure what that means but again this has obviously been excavated here this is a mud flood new level okay you know, what what more is there to say I mean you know this this could be in France you know you know got this what we what we would call Romanesque architecture you know, it's there again um, it's become the same material as the rock that surrounds it you know it's just all just it's just been saturated and it's all became the same become the same thing okay, let's go to the next mm. I suppose the only thing worth mentioning here is, you know, you've got <coughs> this grid work here. Now, it's probably made of stone. And you put, they will probably tell you that, oh, yeah, basically, you know, the ancients, what they did is they punched tiny little square holes through the rock to make this grid system. But obviously, this was once metal, it was just a grid, an air vent, but over time, it just ended up becoming rock. S simple as. Y your eyes don't lie. What what you see is what it is. Okay, uh, it's not much else to say about this really. Okay, uh, it's Jerusalem. <sighs> I don't know what that is. much to say here this is obviously not Jerusalem this is Arabic so, is that a star fault symbol 
Right, you know, you can see that, you know, these here. I mean, that's not carved out of rock. No, this is some other material. And it's just petrified one way or another. I mean, this could have been wood initially. And we've got Nazareth, where Jesus was born, a Nazarene. There's not much we can see here. I mean, by 1811, 1812, deduct a thousand years, let's just say 800 years later, you know, again, there's just nothing left, is there? Is there? You know, the mud flood has hit this place as well as it's hit everywhere else. I mean, you've just got tops of buildings. We've just got buildings sort of constructed out of what was left. They're just mud buildings. That's all. You know, the, 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 the village of Nazareth is probably about six foot below all of this. I don't know if that's supposed to say Bethlehem. <coughs> um, difficult, very difficult. <coughs> Just to, to understand what that says, where this place is. But this looks like a quarry, doesn't it? You know, if you look at quarries and how they go along, they go along to the next line and they cut down. This just looks like a quarry. Very difficult. Very poor quality photo. Can't really say much about this. Looks like a quarry. This is the building that we looked at earlier. <coughs> Excuse me. This building we looked at earlier. This is obviously the other side of it. Again, there's another building. Another, uh, some pillars there, some people call Romanesque. So this is obviously um, some structures that have been, been completely buried by a mud flood. I mean, the evidence is there. Yeah. For how long, I don't know. Well, at this point, you know, 50 years or something like that. But already, you know, the mud's turning hard. It's becoming like rock. Whatever these structures were made of, all the water, all the moisture, everything within it is saturated into whatever this building material was in the beginning. And it's almost like the same thing now. And so archaeologists will say, uh, people carved all this stuff out of the mountain but it's just nonsense you can see that with your own eyes and here's uh, blocks of other buildings the tops of that just for, for whatever reason wind or, or whatever have just fallen down so that's why you've got all of these you know what looks like cut pieces of stone all over the top of this surface that's all it is it's really that simple uh, well this has been claimed as a mosque somewhere in Egypt again look at the architecture it's all over the world in all the capital cities of the world. If, we, if, we, if, I, 
for Arabs or you know Muslims to say, oh yeah, that they constructed this. It's just ridiculous. We've got another atmospheric electrical mast here. Okay, so all you need to do to claim this as being uh, an Islamic mosque yeah, is just cut out one section here and then you've got the half crescent moon. Perfect. Very easy. Yeah, is this another mosque? No. Okay. This is quite interesting, actually. Now, I can't see where the ground level is here. But this is Jerusalem. You can... You, you can get the feel from just looking at this photo that it's very deep. So this is probably um, around the, the, t the time of King Solomon. We've got some uh, figurines here, and the architecture and stuff like that. So King Solomon was probably around the same time as what we call the Romans, you know, when we look at all of the stuff that they've done and they do all those uh, figurines and stuff like that in all of the architecture, you know, this is pretty much the same. So pretty much that era of people were around the same time as King Solomon. So that's pretty evident. You've got the same pillars as usual. This has been blocked up for whatever reason. Uh, there's no figurine here. Um, this may have originally have been wood. So this is obviously the ground floor. This would be the second, the first floor or second floor, depending if you're American or English. And this would be the top. Look at this structure to the left. See, the supporting structure, how far it goes down. Interesting. So this probably was ground level, especially when we look at these here. No idea where this is. Oh, that's the Jordan. And that's the end. Okay, hope you enjoyed that. And um, just browse through it. I'll leave a link in the bottom. Look through it for yourself. And uh, make your own decision. Okay, thank you very much.